So we will show you how to remove the hydraulic pump or hydro control unit and the tonneau cover cylinder um, out of the trunk and put the replacements back in. For access to the pump in the trunk we need to take out this trim panel on the left side. It's fastened in place with seven tabs in total if I count it correctly. One of those is a screw-on tab right here, Just that's just for the cargo net I assume. And then we have six rivet style tabs. Now we've taken five out already and loosened this one already because really what I want to show you is how these tabs work. They're rivet style meaning with a screwdriver you first pry up the middle part and then the whole tab comes out of the uh, carpeted panel. So having taken all of these tabs out we pull and wiggle, we clear the rubber molding, we pull a little bit this away, we pull a little bit that away, eventually the whole thing wiggles loose and here you go, the carpeted panel comes out and we have a clear view, almost clear view of the pump with the top controller module in the way right now. For better access to the pump, we'll take out this uh, top control module. All it takes is a Torx T15 wrench to undo the mounting bolt here. Keep the bolt in a safe place. Move the controller out of the way. You can even unclip this electric cable. All you need to do is push on the top tab and then pull the cable up. Now we can see the pump a little bit better. Here's the reservoir with the minimum maximum mark and the uh, fill plug. And now we have three bolts to loosen, actually hex nuts. One, two and the third one is behind the cylinder here. We've already loosened them so I'm just taking those nuts off all the way. The one in the rear we've taken off all the way already and just for show I'm taking off these last two nuts then uh, we need to disconnect the top of the tonneau cylinder that's easily done this is a collar style pin that uh, was clipping around the collar of the uh, rod end on the cylinder we pull the pin out get the cylinder off the upper ball joint here and at this point we just have to pull the pump and cylinder together in this sheet metal frame up and wiggle them out of the way until they uh, land nicely in the trunk. I will put some cardboard on the carpet so that if we spill anything we don't get the carpet dirty. So let me just pull up on this, there we go, move the insulation out of the way, pull up some more, turn and wiggle, and here we are, we have the pump and the cylinder in the trunk now, now to remove the cylinder we only need to remove the lower mounting pin, to do that we stick our small flat screwdriver into this clip that allows us to pull out the lower mounting pin and with that we can free the cylinder from this um, frame. Now then we do some contortions, turn things around here to get access to the harness. I have not practiced this so I'm improvising while we're shooting. Basically what we need to do is get cut one zip tie down here so that this wiring is out of the way and then we need to cut another zip tie here to get more wiring actually hose harness out of the way. At that point we can uh, pull the cylinder out so give me a moment to grab a cutter and cut those zip ties. One. OK. 
carefully on the bottom here so that I don't accidentally cut a wire. There we go. Now the cylinder can be pulled out of the way and we can in our usual fashion remove the hoses and the travel sensor. Now if you were to only replace the pump you wouldn't have to take the cylinder out of this mounting frame. You would leave the cylinder in and uh, simply unbolt the mounting frame uh, from the pump. Uh, what do we have? We have must be three uh, 10 millimeter hex bolts. That should be pretty trivial. And same as we did for the other cylinders, we tap on the clip a little. Now let's get this cylinder into a stationary position so that I can do this without being blocking the picture too much. Line 33, the odd number is at the rod end. Line 34, the even number is on the bottom. The lower clip is out. We pull out the hose. And pull that hose. Now we're down to carefully moving the travel sensor out of this slot in the cylinder's rail and the tonneau cylinder is removed. We'll show you how to put it back in place after we've taken the pump off the frame and replaced the pump as well. Don't want to be redundant here. Uh, should be pretty straightforward, but we'll show you later how to put that cylinder back in place. Now we have the pump frame here and I will quickly remove those uh, hex bolts. No need to show that on film. Next I will show one here, one here and there must be one hiding below and then next I'll show you the pump without the mounting frame on it. So we've taken the mounting frame off. I was wrong. It took four uh, 10 millimeter head hex bolts uh, to get the mounting frame off. And now we have the pump here upright. You see all the 14 hydraulic hoses going into the pump into this aluminum manifold plate. This plate is, in, is held in place with three uh, Allen bolts that take a five millimeter Allen wrench to uh, unscrew. Now we've already loosened them and I'll show you taking one of them out completely and if I don't get into the picture too much I'll take the other two out as well. After that we will um, have to pull on every single hose a little bit until they all have been loosened a little. Then once every single hose has been pulled on um, we can pull the manifold place, plate, this aluminum plate out uh, with all 14 hoses attached to it all together at one time. The hoses will not get um, lost or um, unorganized. They will stay confined to the retaining plate. So I cannot just easily pull this plate up. I could do that but it would be a little bit rough on the aluminum here. Let's do it the gentle way. Pull a little bit on each hose and uh, once they have all been loosened up we can pull the manifold plate up. So it's easy for me to get in the way of the photo is a little bit awkward so I will cheat a little bit and uh, push this plate up with a screwdriver. There we go. Now you see how the hoses still all stay confined to the uh, 
to the plate and we still need to pull up a little bit on each hose to finally get them uh, out of the pump. Okay, so now we've pulled the hoses out and we have the bare pump here. If you've ordered your pump from Top Hydraulics with core exchange, meaning we send you one first, then you send back your old one, it costs the same in the end, then uh, we have shipped you the replacement pump with these plastic plugs that you simply push into place to seal in the hydraulic fluid. If uh, you didn't go that route, then you want to make sure that you completely drain all fluid out of the pump because otherwise uh, you'll have a mess at your hands with the fluid with leaking into the uh, parcel and carriers don't like that. So again, if you did not do core exchange where Top Hydraulic sends you a pump first, then you want to uh, drain all the fluid out of the pump, which means obviously take the fill plug out, dump the pump, and uh, you know turn it into different directions to make sure you're um, getting fluid out of all the cavities here and then uh, dump it again. Now we're down to uh, disconnecting the wiring harness from the controller. We don't, if we disconnect only the harness for the pump from the controller, then we should not need to disconnect the battery because these are all outputs from the controller going to the pump. Conversely, if you were to disconnect this other part of the harness that actually gives the controller power, then you should disconnect the negative pull on your car's battery just to um, avoid uh, making any mistakes that damage your controller. So to get the pump harness off the controller, we uh, slide a small flat screwdriver under this tab, pull the plug off a little bit in this far corner, then we put our screwdriver uh, again in here and lever this part of the plug out. Going back and forth a little bit, eventually this harness comes loose and we now simply replace this pump with the one that came from Top Hydraulics. And uh, I'll give you my uh, input again. Top Hydraulics is the only game in town to rebuild these pumps properly. We replace and upgrade all seals. That is, for example, the seals going to the electric motor. We make these seals ourselves. We make them better than the new ones. We go through every single valve and component in the pump. It gets completely torn apart and put together to exceed specs. There's nothing overlooked. Every single solenoid separately goes on a test stand and gets uh, checked for three-way function. Um, nothing is uh, left to chance here. It's not like we go and try to find what's wrong with a pump. No, we tear it apart completely and make sure that every single component is to spec, exceed spec, and when the pump ships back to you, it um, certainly performs as good as a new one. We are convinced that we make these pumps better than new inside. Okay, having said that, let's reconnect this pump to the wiring harness. Let's see if I have it in the correct direction. No, that camel didn't play, pay off. This way is correct because it goes in only one way. And uh, next we put the pump mounting frame back on. Then we put on the tonneau cylinder and we put the whole assembly back into the hole. Finally, put the controller back into place and we're ready to go. Well, I was a little fast there, wasn't I? I haven't connected the hoses yet. So to connect the hoses, we take out these uh, 14 plugs 
that came in the pump and uh, once these plugs are out we put the manifold plate with the hoses back into place and uh, screw it down. Now we don't want to force that, place, that plate down with the bolts but rather make sure that every hose is properly seated and uh, that way we make sure that we don't do any damage. You want to watch out that you're not too liberal with the use of the screwdriver inside these caps so that you don't accidentally pry through the caps or plugs um, plastic and uh, damage the aluminum. So easy does it. I'm just trying to hurry up here so I don't hold you all up while you're watching this video. normally ship these pumps within the US by FedEx two-day service so that'll arrive very fast internationally we use FedEx international service which uh, to most countries is amazingly fast like most places in Canada will get their pump next day shipping as far as um, Dubai in the United Arab Emirates those parcels typically arrive after 36 hours FedEx is just amazing we get great rates from them because we ship so much and we pass those rates on to you so let's make sure I have this in the correct order yes I will try to match up all the hoses have them going into the pump straight so I'm not forcing anything nothing seems to be wedged so now I can put my three Allen bolts into place and I will just as you would with a tire fasten these um, just a little at a time then move on to the next one and keep going in a circle a little tricky to do without being in the shot here but we'll get there so that one is tightened down a little more then I'll do the same over here let's go down a millimeter or so if you're in the car business you think metric because uh, all car parts are metric so I will always talk in millimeters instead of inches so just one more circle and we have all these bolts tightened down next thing I don't have to show you how we put the sheet metal mounting frame on we'll do that in the background and the next shot will be reinstalling the uh, freshly rebuilt tonneau cover lift cylinder so here's our pump already in the frame and uh, we next install the hoses uh, as I said before, they have to be on the other videos with the uh, cylinder installations. The way the hoses get installed is you first put the O-ring on the fitting, then gently put the fitting into the cylinder. It clicks into place. Well, it doesn't click. This one made a clicking noise because it went in so straight. And I'll already fasten this lower hose number 34 and uh, next I actually should put on the travel sensor because uh, 
it will otherwise be obstructed by the hose travel sensors over here I will try to put the wiring for it into the same path that it was before there's really only one path so the sensor clicks into the cylinder's uh, rail come on there you go and then hose number 33 goes on top put in my o-ring gently put the fitting into the cylinder and secure the hose with a clip there it is clicked into place and I will worry about the zip tying in a moment first I'll put the cylinder back into the bracket put the mounting pin the bottom mounting pin through secure it with a clip and then I'll get myself some zip ties and tie up the travel sensor and the hoses the way they were before. So I was rushing installing the cylinder and did not watch out exactly how to route the wiring for the travel sensor. It came back to bite me so let's take a close look at how the wiring really should be in this frame. We have the harness going through between the pump and the cylinder it comes up here the blue tab locks into the frame the sheet metal mounting frame here's the connector that ultimately goes into the top controller and the travel sensors harness gets zip tied down here with that we have everything ready to put the pump back into its hole, screw it down, attach the controller, and test the top. Let's do it. Now we're down to getting this clevis pin back in into the ball joint and tightening the um, bolts for the pump and I'm noticing right now that the clevis on this particular cylinder is up a little bit high meaning I need to loosen this nut screw the clevis down a little bit so that it uh, properly fits the ball joint in the trunk lid frame. So I have um, loosened that uh, hex nut with a 13 millimeter wrench, screwed the clevis down a little bit. I screwed it down a couple millimeters farther than it needed to be because we want the cylinder to be able to pull down as far as it can. There should be a little bit of play left or travel left in the shaft even when the tonneau cover is uh, closed all the way. We have fastened that nut again and next we'll put the controller back into place and uh, at that point should be re ready to move the top. The harness goes in only one way. We want to attach the power cable to the pump and lastly we could bolt down the controller already but we know that since we just changed all cylinders in this top there will be a bunch of air coming back into the reservoir so really no, no use to um, bolting the controller down yet because we need to refill the pump after we've cycled the top a little bit. So let's do that next. 
So we have replaced all seven cylinders in this top and have replaced the pump. We have put in a pump that was filled to the maximum and um, then we have already uh, cycled the top ones. The important thing to mention is that when you first start cycling the top after all cylinders have been replaced and there's a bunch of air in the system, the pump will not be able to cycle through continuously. Basically what happens, there's so much air that uh, some components don't move fast enough and then the computer will time out the system saying, hey, it hasn't moved, it hasn't reached uh, um, a certain milestone yet in a certain amount of time, so the system times out stops. You just keep pushing that button uh, towards the rear to uh, raise the top and um, eventually it will work. So um, I had to push that button probably 10 times for the first cycle, but eventually it works and everything is good. So about, about the amount of fluid that's needed, since the pump was, was installed um, full to the max, uh, we then cycle the top down and up again. The pump was making some weird noises because it was really cavitating, catching a lot of air. and. Um, then we refilled the pump back to the maximum and uh, cycled the top again and at this point with the top up the fluid level in the pump is just at the minimum level. Now I'm expecting that there are some, still some air bubbles somewhere in the system so after the top has cycled a few more times eventually you will find the fluid level a little bit under minimum. Um, I would advise to um, just Give it a break right now. Uh, you don't put the carpet panel in yet. Um, use the top a little bit until you're really comfortable that um, the fluid level will not go below minimum and then um, replace the carpet panel in the trunk and you're good. Um, I would not cycle the top more than say three times in a row because eventually your pump motor will overheat. So if you have the patience, please uh, cycle the top maybe three times and then give it a break, have dinner or uh, do something to let the pump cool down for say 20, 30 minutes. Then you can cycle the top again. We don't want to overtax the motor on this pump after you just got a nicely rebuilt pump in there. So. Just as proof, I will cycle the top in a moment. Just want to say one more thing. That is, we don't w normally work on cars. So we're, we did this kind of for fun and to show you people how it's done. Obviously, it's good for us anyway, but mostly it's good for the um, Crossfire community so that you can help yourselves. Um, there was nothing super difficult. All the tricky parts we have shown you, there were some tight spots on the main lift cylinders where the bolt had to be pulled out on the bottom. You had to drill out a rivet over here on the bow tension cylinder. The pump was a little bit, little bit clumsy to pull out, but in the end there was nothing difficult here. You can do it all with a little bit of patience. In fact, we've had one uh, customer who did it with one arm because he had use of only one arm he still replaced his cylinders that's pretty awesome we did this as a crew of two technicians um, doing all these videos on manual operate, operation on replacing all the cylinders on the pump uh, removal and replacement and most of these shots have to be retaken because something goes wrong in um, while shooting filming so still all of this, two people got done in a day. So um, if you are patient and watch instructions well, you can do this job yourself, even if you're not super mechanical. And um, so budget a whole day if you're um, uh, fairly mechanically inclined, or budget a whole weekend if you think you're not so fast and maybe you'll get done faster. And if not, um, you'll get there. There is always help on either the Crossfire forums or if you purchase parts from us, we certainly are happy to support you uh, over the phone or by email. You will get this top to work again. So let's see it move. I have already unlatched the uh, front. That's trivial, unlatching that D-ring. Now I'll push the button back and you hear the pump running. First thing happens is the rear bow unlatches, rear bow comes up. Next thing you see the tonneau cover unlatching and coming up. 
Next thing, the rear bow comes down, then the top comes down, and the pump sounds pretty smooth. I don't hear much air in there anymore after two cycles. Tonneau cover comes down, tonneau cover latches, single beep means we are done, and the top is down, everything works. Awesome, woohoo!